Welcome, Hawkington Hiller fans, to Chick Wells Field, Dave Hughes Stadium, Friday, October 27, 2007, where your Hawkington Hillers will take on the Pembroke Titans. Tonight, a playoff game, Division Four South, sectional quarterfinal here in Hopkinton. Don, what are we looking at? Um, well, what we're looking at is, a, is an undefeated uh, TVL champion, Hopkinton Hillers, running on to the field here. Um, this is going to be their first playoff game, and it's the first playoff game for the Hillers um, in two years, since 2015. So there's a lot of excitement. They came off of a huge win against Holliston last week to clinch the TVL title. And uh, there's a lot of excitement around the team. And, hey, this is playoff football. They can't get anything more exciting, Rick. Yeah, so let's talk about this a little bit. The offense, we know the, the, the dynamic duo that we have out there. But let's talk about the defense a little bit. Eight points against Hollis and a shutout before that. Several shutouts this year. Connor Ebert, six tackles, three sacks, one hurry. Globe Player of the Week. We have Anthony Farina, who was all over the field he last week. He had a heck week. of a game last week. He had week. ten Both tackles, an, inter <laughs> an interception, a fumble, yep. a pass breakup. And Kyle Cousins, who's been a monster all year long. Yep. Six tackles, one sack, four hurries, two forced fumbles. To me, that's been the key to being able to keep to win these close games. Absolutely. I mean, they, um, you know, you, you think of, initially you'll think about the Hillers and you'll think about Kelleher to Abbott and throwing the bombs and all the receivers and all this. But the, the defense has really, really, really been the backbone of the team. And it showed last week. It's a senior-laden defense. I think there's only a couple juniors playing. Um, Hebert's back on there. I know Canal, he's a sophomore. He was on there a little bit. But otherwise, it's all seniors, Rick, and that makes a big difference. Yeah, so let's talk about another accolade that came last week. We had Mr. Ebert as the defensive player or a glow player of the week, and we had uh, Coach Gerard named the New England Patriots Coach of the Week, a pretty prestigious award. Uh, one of my favorite past players, Andre Tippett, comes down and presents uh, the award along with a thousand dollar donation to the program yeah that was pretty nice to see i mean coach gerard uh has been here for eight years and he's just been a tremendous leader of the program and um it is certainly well earned uh you know the results on the field this year are speaking for speaking volumes but just seeing what he's done over the years with the program he he couldn't find a more deserving coach than him and and that was pretty cool having tip it out here i mean he's an nfl hall of famer and uh I don't know if you saw any of the pitchers, but he's pretty huge. No, I, I, he's a I, was, big dude. I was traveling this week. I didn't get to see any of it. I just happened to look at the media guide, and you know, I, I, I will uh, echo that sentiment as well. Well deserved. I've uh, been doing it for eight years here in Hawkington, and, and, and finally get that recognition. So let's talk about Pembroke a little bit. Uh, second year head coach Brian King brings the Titans into Hawkington with a, actually a two and five record. But uh, my understanding is that might be a middle, uh, a little misleading in the sense that they play in a tough division. Um, they're probably one of the s smaller schools within the division, um, and they've lost a lot of close games. Yeah, I guess they have three games that they lost uh, by a total of six points. Um, their defense, you know, we're speaking about the Hillers' defense, but their defense looks to be pretty strong, only giving up 17 points a game. So, you know, I'm expecting a, a, at least a defensive battle. And the thing with these playoff games, Rick, and once you get out of the regular season, you see teams that you've really – don't know you have no idea so it, uh, it's, it's exciting so let, let's get this going yeah they uh, I didn't see which we were talking I didn't see who won the coin toss and I don't know who's gonna get the ball at the moment but we'll see that in a little bit the two teams look pretty fired up the weather's perfect for a football game and the field looks terrific you could not have gotten a better season weather wise I'll tell you I mean every every night it's just been perfect and yes the field looks excellent so the last time you touched upon this a little bit that the Hillers were in the playoffs Actually, since the system has started, they've made it four out of five years. Um, the Hillers' last playoff win was 2013 at home here against Milton. Uh, and I remember that game. Uh, the kickoff uh, came down the sideline and was very close uh, at the end, a 26-22 win. Hillers were down 21 points. But we will uh, come back and discuss uh, what we're going to do tonight right after the national anthem. We not tolerate negative statement or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Such actions include taunting, trash talking, and parading of players, coaches, and officials. Please respect the fans, coaches, participating, and opponents alike. Thank you for helping create a positive, respectful, and fun environment here at Hopkins High School. Now, please rise. Remove your hats and direct your attention to the North End Zone as we welcome Craig Hay to the Hopkins High School Band to honor our flag for the playing of the National Anthem. All right.
Well, the band's here again tonight, Don, and uh, nothing gets me more juiced up than a, a good rendition of the nat uh, national anthem. Uh, it adds so much to the atmosphere when the band's here. It's it, great. It certainly does, and, and hopefully the cheerleaders are in good shape tonight and we can put the, some points up on the board, get them their uh, push-ups. It's a little brisk tonight, but it's a perfect football weather night. Yes. So as we move into the playoff system, this is the Division IV South quarterfinal. Um, again, we don't know. This plays out as it, as it does tonight. Um, you know, a 2-5 and five team, I hope people aren't... Um, you know, misled by that record because I was watching these guys warm up a little bit, and they do have some talented players. So, well, they they do. I guess they got a couple kids that can play defense, and they've got number thirty-two who supposedly has big play big play capabilities. So, you know, again, we have no idea. It's high school football. We're about to kick it off. We're going to find out who uh, who wants it more. So the uh, the Pembroke Titans will receive the ball. Brendan Kelly's going to kick, and it's kind of a try to drop it in between, but it got a little deep, and I can't see who's got it. But he breaks up the left sideline. He's coming down. He's at the 50. He breaks to the outside, and he's tackled from behind at the Hiller 40-yard line by number 21. That's Zachary. Oh, what's his last name? <laughs> I get all excited. Number 21, Zach Frank on the tackle. Yeah, that kick didn't go as deep, you know, um Brendan has, has, has the ability to kick it in the end zone. That looked like it landed about the 10-yard line. The, the, uh, the Pembroke player grabbed it in, um, you know, a, as he was running. And there was a couple nice blocks on a couple of the Hillers' front line there, and he just took it up for a nice return. They're in Hiller territory to start things off here. So number 12, Jack Kelly, will bring his team up to the line of scrimmage. He's on the center. An eye bag. Boy, you don't see this formation in the uh, – in high school must an eye, eye formation to number 32 straight up looks like a two-yard gain to the 39-yard line of the Hillers yeah the scouting report on them is they run a two-back offense so you know it'll be interesting to see if they run the eye mostly or if they kind of split the backs or use one in the slot but right there it looked like they had their fullback leading up through the uh, a gap to pound up uh, two yards so this is the first drive of the game already at the 39-yard line and the hill is set up by a a wonderful kickoff return, and again, I didn't catch the number. It might have been number 10. Could have been Nathan Beath. So it's second and eight. And they're in that I formation with uh, a slot to the right. And another straight handoff, and he's going to get nothing. Back to the original line of scrimmage, tackled by Ionelli, who came up. Yeah, the, the Hillers had nice penetration there from the right side of their defensive line, led by McDonald, number 52, and uh, Brown, number 24. Um, you had Ionelli come in there and clean it up. So that's, uh, that's a good indication that the Hiller defensive line, who's been strong all year, Rick, um, is, is here to play tonight. Yeah, you know what, and they flow well to the ball. You, you know, he bounced that outside, and nobody got caught inside. They were flowing back to him, trying to get outside, and he really had nowhere to go. Now, they, that's the thing with this defense, and what makes it so good is it's they're, they're quick. They're, every kid on that defense can run. Okay, so it's third and eight, no gain on the play. Jack Kelly, another handoff straight up the middle, and oh, nice, Ionelli stood him right up. I don't know if somebody had his feet, but... Uh, no more after that hit. Uh, yeah, you know, that was a nice, some nice blocking in, uh, inside by the Pembroke offensive line, and that, the fullback threw a nice block there also. But uh, Michael Ionelli came up with what is a textbook form tackle right there, Rick. So they got about four on the play. It's going to lead to a fourth and a, a long three, we'll call it. And a uh, like wholesale change is probably a punt. Well, you know, you never... Being aggressive on the road is never a bad thing, especially when you're the number eight seed playing the number one, but looks like Pembroke's going to play it a little conservative here and try and pin the Hillers back. Oh, no, they're not. And no. Brown's going to snuff that out. Boy, nobody touched him. He came up, looked like he was going to punt. He held up, and then as soon as he started running, he was right there on him. Yeah, I'm not sure if that – well, Brown, nobody blocked Brown, so he came right in. I don't know if it was going to be, you know, you see some of these punters where they'll kind of run it over to the side yeah, and let their coverage yeah, get right, down there and right, then punt it. Right. I don't know if that's what that kid was trying to do there, but he had no chance. I mean, Brown was unblocked, and, and he's going to run you down every time. Yeah, in fact, he lost, uh, lost about four yards on the play, so that didn't work very well at all. So the Hillers will take over at the 
Right on 40, 37 yard line, we'll call it. Quick throw to, oh! And he got smoked. I don't know who that was. Is that Ian Uh Yes. Yeah, so you give some, you get some, right? Yeah, That's how it go. works. I'll tell you what, Michael Ian uh, <laughs> he's he's had some couple football plays here early in this game. Yeah, he's into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's definitely into this game. So, it, uh, you know, just a quick look at the defense, Rick. I didn't see anybody over the top there. I don't know. You know, last week we had Holliston who held Hopkinton to – Really, one touchdown. They had two safeties over the top all game. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a little observation I saw while they were warming up uh, after this play. So we got two wide receivers to each side. It looks like Ebert in the backfield. And he throws off his. Oh, oh Abbott was well covered by number. Number number seven? I can't see over there, Don. You got a number? Uh, number th nine, maybe. Number nine. We'll give that to. We'll give the coverage to number nine, Aiden Glenn, on that play. With uh, Kelleher had to really scramble. It was some pretty strong pressure yeah. up the middle. Yeah, Pembroke got in there pretty quick. I, I don't. I. It looked like one of the defensive linemen had some pressure, but they also had a linebacker blitzing. Hebert picked one of the guys up, but then the other guy flushed. Um, Ryan out of the pocket. He was running to his left, threw back across his body, kind of fluttered. Lucky that wasn't picked off. So we have uh, Ebert still in the backfield. And he's, look, he's got not, he's, he's looking, 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 late, late. Oh, it's going to get, oh, it's picked. Oh, so it picked off by number 33 at the 45-yard line of Pembroke in a change of possession. Yeah, I mean, Ryan kind of had all day. He had really just one guy out in this part of the um, in, in this part of the field here where he was throwing. It was going to be Ionelli deep, um, but he was covered. And then Ryan, I'm not sure where he was throwing it to, but it was a pick. So here we go. Yeah, it's almost, almost as if he wanted whoever was running to cut it off because there were two white jerseys there. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a miscommunication there. And Pembroke dodged a bullet with that uh, that turnover in the first half on downs, or first drive on downs, so they're back in action here. So it's a fake handoff, the little play action. He lofts a pass into nowhere just to throw it away. Nobody was open. Number 11 broke late after that. I think uh, Cooney fell down. Yeah, Cousins had nice pressure there. He looked like he beat his guy one-on-one -on -one and flushed the quarterback, number 12, out of the pocket. He had no choice but to just throw it away. So that's the idea, right? They're in the eye formation. They run, 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 and then occasionally you come out of that with the play action, and hopefully something works for you. Yeah, I haven't seen this. Uh, they haven't thrown the ball yet. So, um, you know, that was 32 in the game. Wasn't he going to be their guy? Uh, yeah, he could be. There's a couple of guys that are right. And that's nothing. Nothing going there. I can't see the number who's running, but it's going to be third and 10. He got to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're not, they're not driving the Hillers off the ball. The front seven looks like they are holding strong. And, again, you've got these safeties the Hillers do, whether it's, you know, Ionelli, you got the lawyer coming in who can stick. you got Abbott who can hit when he, you know, when he wants to. But, and then you got number six, Cooney. Um, he can also hit. So it's a physical defense and a quick defense, and they all pursue. Yeah, and they're using Ebert again on the outside in the playoffs. Got a good extended time last, last week. And they're going to run it again. And that's nothing doing. It's going to be fourth and about nine. Yeah, this looks like there's going to be a little bit of smash mouth football here, Rick. Um, I'm sure Pembroke looked at the scores that the Hillers were putting up. And, you know, it doesn't sound like they want to get into a shootout. So I could see them trying to run the ball and take some, you know, time off the clock. But um, I would think that they need to open up their – imagination on offense a little <laughs> bit more as the game progresses. Well, nothing's working right now. I mean, you're not going to hand it off three times and get a yard each time, so. Well, they, they, they kept their blockers in. Boy, they, um, they, they, he's smart enough to kick it away from number two, huh? And that gets down to about the, oh, the numbers have faded, but around the 15-yard line, I think. Yeah, I'm going to, well, it looks like it's closer to the 10. Um, let's see where it lands. Yeah, he's on. It looks like he's got it right. Yeah, at the he's about the 12, maybe. Yeah, 12, 12 yard line. Yeah, about the 12-yard line. Will take over downs on the 12. So uh, a, four, a three and out after the turnover doesn't hurt the Hillers, but the field position has changed considerably, starting at the 12-yard line. Yeah. Now we'll see here. Um, look, they're coming out in their trips right formation. So Ebert's in the backfield. 
And they'll throw a quick one to to Cooney. Who's over on the far yeah, side? Yeah, that was Cooney. Um, that was a nice quick pass by Ryan. Um, Shane hauled it in, and then he made a, you know he made a nice catch, and then he kind of bowled the kid over. Uh, that's the way to some good tough running by Shane Cooney there. So second and one, anything in the arsenal available here. You might try, try an opportunity to go deep. As we said, there's nobody, no safety over the top. They're going to try to man up. I, I mean, uh, let's take a look at what they're doing with Abbott, but I have a tough time They're gonna thinking they're going to have only one guy he's, on He's him. wide, he's yeah, wide right here. He's all, my gosh. All, throw a bomb. All by himself. Oh, they zoned it. And Cooney closer uh, for I guess, they, yeah, they're going to give it to him, it looks like. He reached out. Yeah, th yeah, you get the first down. So a uh, nice reach after he got grabbed to be able to get the first down. They'll set it up at about the 23-yard line. I mean, the Hillers did a good job last week of switching up their offense when they needed to from going back to that five-step drop and throwing bombs to just coming out and doing more like a West Coast thing where they're throwing the short passes. And it looks like they're going into that mode right now. And it's a, a run to Ebert who swallowed up in the middle, picks up about – Two, three on the play. Yeah, that was some some good inside running there by Connor. Um, looked like the line got a little push. And you know these guys these these guys have been doing a good job all year. You've got uh, left tackle Ben Powers, left guard Kyle Stuckel, center is Theo Cavallo, the right guard is Noah Budatello, and um, the senior Alex McDonald is the uh, right tackle. They've been specifically strong in pass blocking. So second and seven. And still Ebert in the backfield. He's looking to pass. He steps up and he's taken down for a sack of about, could be about 10 yards on the sack. Well, that, that, was, that was on cue, Rick. I was just talking about what a good job they did pass blocking, and they just got rolled. Um, but it looks like, you know, the, the front three, it looks like they have three down linemen for Pembroke, but they're bringing their linebackers also. So they, they are getting pressure early on um, on Ryan Kelleher. And now, you know, you got to be careful here, Rick. You're on your own 17-yard line, and you got third and 16. you gotta, you got to watch what you're doing here with the ball. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that little jet sweep or, or something like that to, to get one of these guys going, whether it's Ebert or, or Abbott. So Cooney by himself out here to the right, three receivers to the left. And he's back. He's oh, gonna, Abbott's he's, wide open. He's going to let it He let it go. Oh! We threw that a long way and just out threw him. Ah. Well, that's the danger of not having another safety back, Don. I mean, he's got the he, – obviously, hey, he has the ability to get there. Rick, I, you know, to me, I don't know what these coaches are watching. How long <laughs> you could not have it. You're sitting out. You got – you're allowing uh, Will Abbott to just run a post to the center of the field and, and run under a bomb. I unless mean, there was uh, – unless they picked up a – you know, unless they picked up a blitz and they, they had to go man-to-man -man in that play, I, you know, I don't know, but uh, – I, I kind of was ISOing on, on Will there, and no, he just kind of ran by the guy, and there didn't look like any safety help coming his way. So, so a nice punt, and it's going to be, oh, it's dropped, fielded by number 11 from Pembroke, and he gets up to about the 39, 40-yard line of the Hillers, number 11 being Joe Benting, the 6'1", 195 senior. Yeah, I mean, he did a nice job there of, of picking up his own fumble um, and then made some positive yardages, yardage out of it. And here we go. We got Pembroke starting inside Hiller territory again. And I'll tell you, at 2.59 of the first quarter, it's been a fast quarter, a lot of running. Um, and the incompletes, they seem to be turning the ball over, or, uh, plays over pretty quick. So we're going through this pretty fast. So they're staying in the same formation. And it's a handoff to uh, number 32. And he... Dips and dues a little bit as Nicholas Lane picks up about six or seven on the play. Yeah, he had some quick feet there, number 32. Um, he made a couple nice moves. So, uh, you know, the scouting um, that we had on him was he's, you know, he's got big playability. And just by watching that run and the way he moves his feet, I could see that. So we'll call it second and four. And they just switch the receivers to this side with the slot. A quick, quick out to number 80, and he's going to go straight up the field, and he's gang tackled, but he got to be close to the first down. 
That was just a little bubble screen to number 80. He didn't really have anybody around him. The Hillers closed quickly, but not quick enough to uh, stop him from getting a first down. Yeah, so Brian Burns hooks up with his uh, quarterback, Jack Kelly, and he picks up the first down at the 29-yard line of the Hillers. So with just about two minutes now to go in the first quarter, short drive for Pembroke. Looks like they're gonna, they're gonna two receivers, one to each side, but they're staying in the offset, and he better get going because he's getting chased good. <laughs> he just threw it away. He felt the pressure from Ebert and Brown. Yeah, uh, Ebert and Brown are the two outside linebackers, and it looks like they were both uh, instructed to blitz. Uh, they both did and put some some pressure on the quarterback to make a decision right away, and he just threw it away, which was the right decision. How'd they do? Yeah. So we have uh, our staff out here today. We have John Ritz on a camera. We have, oh, we got a, before I get into that, we have a penalty on the play, I think, where he's explaining something to Coach Gerard. I'm not exactly sure, with 1.41 to go in the first quarter. So we have uh, Mike Tarosian, our producer. John Ritz is on camera. Denise Antaki is on camera. And John, uh, Tom Diggs will be the director. And of course, yours truly and, and Dandy Don in the booth doing best we can. It's a long week of travel, right? Both, long, both of us. Yeah, we've been, we've been out and about. We've, yeah, since the big Holliston <laughs> win last week. You know, you're, you're in Europe, and I'm oh, everywhere else, it seems. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got it covered, right? Yeah, yeah, we're just getting business done. So I'm not exactly sure what the delay is. I'm not sure I thought either. maybe there was a penalty on the play. We have, a, we have a referee that sits in the booth and runs the clock, so it's always nice to get his take on what's going on. Well, last play was an incomplete pass, right? Uh, yeah, he was flushed out of the pocket and threw it away. Maybe it was an intentional grounding situation? Yeah, it got to the line. So it's not like you can go to the replay. No, no, we're working on it, though. No, no, no call. Okay, no call. good. All right, so let's play. It's second, and oh, he's got to go over and explain it to Pembroke. Yeah, he's a, he was allowed to throw it away because he was outside the tackle box. I think that's what they were. Yeah, that's what they were talking about. If he was stayed inside the the hash marks there, or inside the the tackles of the offensive line, and would have thrown it away, it would have been a, a, a uh, it would have been a um, intentional grounding. So a lot of explanation. The first quarter was going pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So I'm not, I'm not exactly oh, sure what we're on. Let's go, Stripes. What are we doing here? I got all five of them talking again. It's not exactly, it's not as if he's saying, no, 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 that wasn't grinding. <laughs> you know, I don't. Now the crowd seems to be filling in here, Rick. Um, you know, it was a little bit, they didn't have the Hiller Grillers here to start. Um, the Hiller Grillers were over at the volleyball game, which they did win, correct? Yeah, they yep. did. They won it. They finished up strong. And uh, now it looks like some, a lot of the students are starting to fill in. They went to, from the it's a big night. They went from volleyball over to uh, football and, you know, just yeah. adds to the atmosphere. And nothing wrong with that. No. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's always been a good time over here. Okay, at so we, we still got a lot of conversation going on. So the, the, the winner of this game – We'll play the winner of Dartmouth Nosset. Uh, oh, so at, at all this, there is some sort of penalty. <laughs> so it was a, a five yard walk off, and I didn't get the call, so I don't really know what the, what the call was. Illegal, an, an eligible re receiver downfield has been the call, it looks like. So that's gonna bring up a first and 15. Kelly in the under center. And he's just a 
He's getting flushed again, but he ends up just dumping it off. And number 18, looks like number 18, Tommy Brooks, the junior, That's catches the ball and maybe picks up uh, a short gain or maybe get back the line of scrimmage right around. So it's at the 34-yard line, the ball. It'll be second and about 15. So he gets back to the, uh, to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he was lucky to do that. He made a nice move and made a kid miss from the Hillers um, just to get back to the line of scrimmage. So did we ever figure out what that penalty was, Rick? Uh, 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 legal man downfield. Legal man downfield? Okay. We'll go with that. Sure. High formation again. And the pitch, and Brown just blew up his block, uh, number seven. Ooh, Ionelli cleans up number 32, Nicholas Lane. Uh, Ionelli is laying some hits out there tonight. And, uh, and and Ryan Brown, is that Ryan number 24? Yeah, it is. Ryan Brown? Um, no, that's Matt Brown. Oh, sorry. He, um, yeah, he had, a, he had a nice game last week. Uh, he was running around uh, Holliston's right tackle or left tackle there with – some regularity, especially towards the end of the game when they were sending him. And uh, right there, he just kind of blew up that play right from the start. And Ionelli uh, came in and cleaned it up. All right, so that, that was a loss on the play. Third and about 18, it looks like. Okay, so they have... Uh, well, we're going to time out. Quarter just ended. That'll end the first quarter with a, a third and 18 coming up. So from a scoring perspective, nothing happening. Um, defense is kind of keeping them in right now, and hopefully the offense will be able to get their breaks as we move into the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, I think this is what we kind of spoke about, Rick. I mean, you know, both of these teams have good defenses, and, uh, you know, they're coming as advertised here. <laughs> Absolutely. So the, the Hillers, as they clinch the TV, TBL Large Championship, this is their first championship since 2005, um, back when the TBL was the TBL in its entirety. Yep. Uh, and today they only play seven games before the playoffs, four of which are in their own league. And then the playoff situation... Uh, it's calculated from that. I believe it's a combination of record and points and um, some sort of calculation that, that levels out these teams a little bit. But a, a two and five team, I, I'm not exactly sure how that happens, Don. It's got to be just overall standings. There must be some, you know, a bunch of 0 oh and 7 teams or <laughs> some 1 and 6. I, I don't know, Rick, but, you know, ever since they have changed the playoffs, I, I've been a big fan of it. You know, we remember back. Oh, yeah, yeah, when you had one loss against Holliston and, you know, you ended your season at, right. you know, 10 and 1. So right. I, I'm for this, whatever. Let's play some games against teams we don't know. Okay, he's play back action. to pass. Kelly's going to throw it. He's throwing it deep, and he's got, oh, number 11. It looked like it was well covered by Abbott, but he got his hands on the ball, and it would have been in the end zone. You know, that um, Will was there. He There was some pushing there. He's mm. lucky that he didn't get called because he had his back to the ball. I thought the ref could have thrown an interference there. He kept his flag in the pocket, but that was still catchable. That went right through that kid's hands. Yeah, it sure did. So that's uh, going to bring up fourth and a long ways from the 37-yard uh, line, we'll call it. And the punter, he's right on the 50. I can't see his number. It's number 10, I believe it is. And he kicks it to the, about the, probably the inside the 15 yard line. He angled it out. And we're gonna get a, official comes up. He gets a little help from his friends right there at the, around the 14 yard line maybe. So you can see the referee at, at the middle of the field telling him when to stop and that's where it is. Well, thus far, um, Pembroke has, uh, has won the, um, the field possession game. I mean, the the field position game. Yep. Um, they've been taking possession at midfield. Unfortunately for them, uh, they have not been able to take advantage of it. Hillers have had, you know, pretty poor starting position. And, uh, you know, they've had a couple first downs, but yet to string any plays together. Sure. So here we go. We got a an empty backfield. Yeah. And in motion comes Ebert, and he's going to cut it up. 
and gets a couple of yards maybe on the – oh, maybe, maybe more than a couple. I'm, maybe I'm looking at the wrong line. Looks like he got about yeah, – About three maybe? Yeah. I mean, no, about five, I would say. Five or six almost, five. So if he was at the 14, he's at the – Yeah, about five on the play. We call it six maybe, long five uh, – long four. Uh, yeah, Connor uh, took that on the jet sweep because it was a uh, empty backfield. Came around, made a nice cut. Benbrook looks like they can pursue to the ball also, and they kind of shut it down. So we got trips to the left side. And it looks like Abbott all by himself out to the right, and it's going to him, and he gets taken down right away by number th is that number 32, Nicholas Lane over there covering him one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. We'll put our fast guy on your fast well, guy. Is see that what 30, happens? Is that 32 or 33? It's hard for me to see with these numbers. It could I have think been, that's 33, Rick. It could have been Jeremy Moylan. So a first down at the, we'll call it the 25-yard line. Trip stack to the left and overthrows. I don't think he had the ball in his hand right for that. No, yeah, Ryan's saying it was his fault. It looked like it came off his hand, um, really not well. And yeah. that was just that was just a poor pass. It looks like he was trying to rush it uh, a little bit too quickly there. Uh, but that's not an unusual play for them to stack up three receivers with Abbott behind. No, and then just get it out there and let him see what he can do. Well, these receivers, you know, you hear a lot about Abbott, but you have Cooney, you have Ianelli, you have Lindquist. Um, you know, those kids are all good size kids, too. Mm. So they can not only run, they can catch, they can block, too. So they utilize that and, and uh, try and spring Will for long runs. Well, we got them all spread out now. Three to the right, two to the left. And a quick, Ooh. oh, and a well, is that the Ionelli play again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're not going to let that happen for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was picked off there for a second. You no, know, he got it to him quick, but as soon as he turned, that guy was there. Well, the Hillers must see something here. They, they have only made really one attempt downfield, um, and he was open. So I would expect uh, Coach Sullivan to go back to that well here again. Well, it's a third and about 13 from the 31 yard. About the, no, 20. 27-yard line, maybe. So this is a pretty pretty big play. You need to get something. You don't want to have to. He's going to roll. And he's got Abbott. And did he? I don't know if he stayed. Catch. He stayed in bounds. I didn't know if he landed out of bounds. It looked like he had caught it. That was a uh, that, was, that was a great catch. Uh, first of all, that was a nice throw. Ryan bought himself a little time rolling out to his left. Turned back, threw it across his body. Just laid it out there where, because Abbott was kind of covered on that. Yeah, Rick. the kid and fell at the end. Did he uh, fall, yeah, or, he, did, or did Abbott kind of put? I thought they were going to oh, get Abbott for oh, a, for, uh, well, a, for an he, offensive push there. He ended up falling on the ground. And, yeah, All right. It looked like Abbott could have had, I, it, it, but whatever. It was a hell of an effort, effort, and he uh, and, and he, he made a great play. A hand off to inside, hand off to Ebert, picks up about three. That ball, uh, that pass landed on the. Pembroke side of the uh, field at the 49 is now at the 46, so it'll be second and seven. Yeah, Hillers, um, this is the first time they've been across the 50. Uh, I'm mm, thinking it might think be. About that. <laughs> um, so, again, that was a that was a, a quite a play there by Will Abbott. He just laid out, and um, that, that that would be on highlights on SportsCenter tonight, right? <laughs> it might, if I can stay up long enough to watch it. <laughs> I won't be. <laughs> So you got trips to the left, Cooney alone to the right. Zach Frank in the backfield. Oh, and he gets out of the rush, but he's not going to get too far as he's bottled up. Well, he actually picked up a few yards. Yeah, I mean, he was looking. He had three kids down here, one of them being Abbott. And, um, you know, he uh, the line held for a second, but then Dylan Burns, number 77 from Pembroke, Ryan made a nice – step to get out of the way of that kid because he was about ready to smash him. So he bought himself some time and then he just took off with the ball. Yeah, I think Aiden Glenn, number nine, the linebacker for Pembroke flows pretty well. He read that once he started running and he came up quickly. And 
I'm going to roll out, pass it to right. He throws two, Abbott, and he's out of bounds at around the 35 yard, 34 yard line. That was a nice, uh, nice smooth play right there. Kelleher does throw the ball well on the move. That was a nice fluid route that uh, Will Abbott ran there for an easy first down. So at 6:38, 38 of the second quarter, the Hill has got a drive going that, that started at around the 14-yard line. Ball's on the 34 of Pembroke. We get a tight trips to the left. And here comes Ebert in motion. And he's got a good block. And he turns. Oh, I didn't see that. A couple of guys were there. I didn't see them there. It looked like it was more open than that. But number 17 and number 3 for Pembroke. Number three being Matt Smith. Number 17 being Steve Amiot came up for the tackle. Yeah, it looked like the Hillers had the um, had had the edge there, and they were going to get Connor around the corner. But um, Pembroke closed on it very quickly. They again, they've got some team speed, and they made a nice tackle for really, uh, you know, just a gain of about three. So it'll be call it second and six, second and seven. Zach Frank in the backfield. Ooh, Kelleher got wrapped up near the line of scrimmage. Looked like Abbott was open early, but for some reason he didn't, he didn't pull a trigger on him. He might have been looking deeper. Yeah, it looked like a zone right with the line. Um, they all uh, did a nice job giving Ryan some time. He had Zach Frank out there in front, who seems to be the uh, Ryan's personal protector on mm -hmm. some of these mm -hmm. passing plays. And, uh, you know, he really had nowhere to go with the ball. Pembroke did a nice job on defense that play. So he lost about a yard in the play, we'll call it. Third and seven. This could be two down territory here. From the 30-yard line. Abbott's in motion from the outside. And he's looking left to Cooney's got it, but he went out of bounds. Number 17. Steve Amiot came up to try to pick and uh, ill-advised. Yeah, he, um, Ryan was rolling left, uh, just uh, again, throws well on the run. That was a nice pass, and that was a nice job by Cooney to, to really, you know, stay focused and catch that ball, because 17 almost got his fingers on it. Yeah, so uh, that brings us to the 20-yard line, first and 10, 4.54 to go in the second quarter. And a quick pitch out to Ebert to get him to the right corner. And he's got a little bit, but not much. Closed down by number 33, Jeremy Moylan. You know, one thing that, that you notice about this Hiller team, Rick, is they don't run between the tackles very often. And when they do go to run between the tackles, they, with, you know, the Connor looks to bounce it out. Now, I don't know if that's by design or if there's just no hole there, but... You know, it's it's something to to watch out for, not only in this game, but as you keep grinding through the ser through the playoffs, especially if you get this cold weather, you need to run the ball. And a quick pass over the middle to the Cooney, maybe. Oh, Lindquist. He was double covered though. Yeah, hey, almost was triple covered. That linebacker got some pretty deep, uh, some depth there. Also, there's three kids around him, so um, it looks like they were ready for that play. So now we got third and eight. Yeah, third and eight from about the 18-yard line. I mean, this, this Pembroke team, anybody who thought was taking a look at a 2-9 record, Rick, and was going to think this was a cakewalk, was um, certainly doesn't think that anymore after seeing the first quarter and a half here. Yeah, so they get that stack formation to the left, and he's running, he's rolling to the left, and he's looking for Abbott. Oh, and he dropped right through his hands. Number 11. Gave him a little uh, out of bounds, Joe Benting, just to let him know he was there. Yeah, that could have been a little unnecessary. But, again, the ref's letting the kids play, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, Ryan was rolling to his left there. That was – Wilk almost had to turn a little bit, um, you know, the other way. It was certainly a catchable ball, certainly with the ability that Will has, but he wasn't able to haul it in. So, now I don't see the field goal team out here, Rick, so it looks like we're going fourth down and eight. Yeah, that'd be a long field goal, 20, 35 yarder for high, high school. It's pretty good. So we got uh, two receivers to each side. 
And I don't know if it's Ebert or Frank in the back. Somebody moved early, but uh, he's going to throw it anyway. And he's got Abbott. Touchdown. Oh! Oh, he had it, but he, he dropped it. So that will be a change of possession on downs. Pembroke will take over at the 18-yard line. Boy, that was, uh, that was a nice throw by Ryan. He almost threw it in the only spot that it could be caught. Uh, Abbott made a heck of an effort there. I thought he had it. He came down with it, but then yeah, he twisted it. Yeah, I don't know. See, from the angle, I don't know if he had to reach back to get it. And when he came down and landed, he was twisting. So. It was a tough catch, and it was another excellent effort by Will Abbott. And this is where the, the Achilles heel is of the uh, Pembroke team. They don't seem to be able to get chunks of yards at all. Now they're all tight, and now they're just going to pound it out again, and it's just going to keep on pounding. Well, maybe this is how it works. You keep on pounding, and you get there. There's a first down run by Lane out to about the 30-yard line. You know, they, it, it looks like they've got some size on the offensive line, Rick. You got number 60 there. He looks like he's kind of a, a bigger kid. Jeez, I guess he is. 6'5", 3'10". the heck? <laughs> yeah, that's a big guy. Yeah. Yeah, he is. I'd be surprised if he's all of that. but uh, uh, He doesn't look like he's 6'5". It doesn't look like here. he's 3'10". Either. 77 is a big kid. Dylan Burns, we already talked about him. 230. So they've got, oh, I don't know. Rick no, they've got, they got yeah. decent size. I mean, they're, 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 they're not as quick as I'm we gonna, are up front, I'm guessing. I'm going to have to put my lineman glasses here and see if these kids fire off or they stand up. And he cuts back in lane, picks up another another four yards on the play. 3.11 to go in the half. Look like, was that a draw play that they were no, trying to No, it's just kind of kind of straight as what they've been doing. Because I just watching this two right, ta uh, right tackle there, it kind of looked like he stood up and was was almost fake pass blocking, and then he went to run. So I don't, I don't know. But we're going to have to watch those kids and see if they can play or not. We've got uh, – is the clock still moving? You picked up almost five on the play. We'll call it a long five. We, they, um, they've got um, Mike Trojan uh, running the loudspeaker today. Well, he's got some help. Could get, it could get interesting. He's got game day coordinator, <laughs> oh, uh, Scotty Scott, Mackin, over Scotty's, there helping him out. Scotty's over there. This place is about to blow up. And Lane, nothing up the middle. Maybe one. Yeah, I mean, the you know, just looking at these kids, uh, Pembroke's got the bigger size for an offensive line, but they're not, they're not moving the Hiller defensive line off the uh, off the ball. Those kids, you know, Cousins and and Brown and and McDonald, they're they're not imposing looking kids. They're not really big, but yeah. they fire off the ball. They stay low, and they're tough. So that that adds a lot. Yep. So Hoppington called the timeout, hoping to kill, you know kill this drive and get a punt and get the ball back with hopefully uh, less than around two minutes to go in the in the half. Is there a timeout? Did somebody call yeah. a timeout? Yeah, there? we called. Hopping and called a timeout. Did? Okay. So it looks like Coach Sully wants the ball back. With some time to operate. This is a big third down here, Rick. And what a, what a surprise. Up the middle and he gets nothing. Looked like number 51 Cousins was there. <laughs> this looks like uh, this looks like the old Kansas City Chiefs offense or something with Ed <laughs> Podolak running up the <laughs> up the cut because uh, they <laughs> Marcus Allen from the Raiders or something. Well, back Marcus there? Allen might have been a little bit too flashy. I'm talking about <laughs> just <laughs> like Marv Van Egan for the <laughs> Oakland Raiders. I mean, they're just lining up and. And they uh, are just pounding it up right over the A and B gap. And it's not like it's that successful. So you would have to think that they might want to think about doing there something different. There must have been a timeout on the play. Yeah. Harvington took another timeout on the play. So they'll get the ball back. And he's not, I don't think he's going to kick it any. Oh, oh that's a, not a bad punt, actually. Keep it on the ground. Keep it away. And he gets a great roll down to about the 20-yard line. Good field position. Nice punt by... By Nathan Beath. Yeah, Nathan, um, it didn't look pretty coming off his no. foot, but it was certainly effective. It was one of those, you know, bouncing, rolling punts, and the most important part of it is it went away from Abbott. So. And the way it rolled, it took off another nine seconds off the clock. Yep, good point there. So uh, let's set it up. We got him around the 21-yard line. The Hillers come out with 2.06 to go in the half. They drove the ball all the way down the field, Don. They had trouble in the red zone on the last drive. 
Yeah, I mean, they, they, they were able to string some first downs together. Now, it's interesting. You obviously want to utilize this two minutes, but you want to get out of your own end before you do something uh, too crazy. And this is a pass to, uh, to Deloya, and it was low. Dry, uh, incomplete. Yeah, it was. It was. It wasn't the best pass, but it was catchable. I think if he asks, uh, if he asks Luke, he'll tell you he should have had that ball. It looked uh, like he may have been running before he had it, and uh, that'll be something his father will be talking to him about after uh, after dinner, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe for the rest of the week. Who knows? <laughs> oh yeah, it'll come up more than a few times. <laughs> so two minutes on the clock, second and ten. Three receivers to the left. And it looks like uh, Linquist is like almost an H back. He's rolling, he's rolling, he's rolling. He's got Abbott, and he's hit right away oh, inbounds. Abbott. Picks up about four, maybe three. You know, Rick, there has been a number of passes where Pembroke breaks on the ball very well. They do. They, you know, they see they recognize what's happening and they break on it they've almost picked off a couple yes they have and right there you know that's that's a boom boom play right there he gets another second and he could have been taking that pick for six so that's what i'm talking about here you're in your own end yep um and now i think pembroke did they, they call they just okay. called the time on okay. they're gonna they're gonna play the game a little bit here yeah well they can't <laughs> wait to get the ball back and run it up the middle so. yeah <laughs> Well, you can't get it back with under a minute and do that so they gotta yeah, we'll see if they can throw all right that'll be the telltale i guess so, again, it's been a, a fairly entertaining game. It's, you know, it's you like some, defense, it, well, it is. It's been some nice plays on defense mm -hmm. and enough plays on offense to, to keep you engaged. So, it, again, you know, against Hollison, it was kind of the same type of game. There wasn't a lot going on, but at times it was. Right, and there's been some physicality to this game, too. There's been some nice hits on both sides of the ball. Yes. So we got Frank in there to the right of Kelleher. And he goes to Cooney, and it's picked. Go. Oh, no, number nine. Number nine, the linebacker, Aiden Glenn, almost baited him. He was just kind of sitting in an open spot, and he saw him coming this way and stepped in front of it. Yeah, that's that's what we were just talking about, Rick. You're down here in your own end, and, uh, you know, you can't um, you can't be you, you, you can't be turning the ball over, and this is a, a huge spot right here, and this is time for the Hiller defense to stand up and make a stop. Yeah, and... I don't think there's a surprise at what's coming. You got 135 to go in the turnover at the 20, 23 yard line. You know, I know they probably still have at least a couple of timeouts if they, if, if not they, all five. If they no, well, they ready. took one at least one um, on the Hiller. Uh, last oh yeah, possession. right, right, right. I think that could be their first. And they're gonna try it outside. Lane cuts back in, but but he's maybe picked up two. You know, this is not a lot there. There's a flag that was just, was that a flag that was just thrown in? Well, I see some shoes that have a lot of, you know, they're talking. There was something right there. Is that a flag? I, uh, yep, that's a flag. It came in from, uh, looked like the back judge. And we got a personal foul. Ooh, Ooh that'll hurt. On Pembroke. So what was that, chop block type I didn't, of thing? I, I didn't see it. Might have been a uh, might have been a lineman that was engaged and got and maybe hit low. Maybe he'll call it now. I didn't see the. Okay, so there's a little extracurricular activity after the play and uh, after the whistle had blown. Uh, Pembroke was still pushing kids around, and that uh, that's a costly penalty right there. Yeah, it's just that's 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 a tough one. I mean, I didn't see anything going on, but. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? Okay. So, Crowd's getting a little rowdy. As they should. I mean, this is the time for it. It's second and a long ways. And he fakes the pitch, and he doesn't get the block. And he's got to get rid of the ball. Uh, Brown just blew that whole thing up. And they, did, they, they were trying to block it, but they couldn't. They even had somebody back, and he had to go around the quarterback to do it, and it just didn't happen, Don. Yeah, I mean, they were rolling uh, a little bit to the right. I don't know if there was more of a running uh, from Brown than it was a roll, but seems like Pembroke does not have uh, – has not made any adjustments when the Hillers send their outside linebackers because they're getting pressure on this kid right away. Yeah, especially on the backside. 
So if they can, uh, maybe if they can take care of that, they can throw it. But they only have two guys out in the pattern. It's not, uh, right. it's not a mystery. Uh, now we're third, third and 25 here. I'm thinking if I'm the Hillers, I, I want the ball back. There's still a minute eight left. Oh, he ran into him, and he's going to get nothing. <laughs> Lane got not the quarterback and the running back ran into each other, and that was the end of that. Well, Hoppernet will probably call a timeout, right? Uh, I would think. Yep, they did. Yeah. Okay, so there's 57 seconds left in the half, and as fast as the first quarter was, <laughs> we came to a crawl here in the second, especially at the end of it. You know, Rick, I'll tell you, you, I don't think that you could get two more opposite offensive teams playing each other. You got one team that never runs up the middle, and you got another team that that's all they do is run up the middle. And right now, both defenses are playing their game. Neither, you know, neither strategy is working. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments the uh, coaches make on both sides of the ball at halftime. Yeah. Now, you, at least you know that the the Hillers have the ability to change off, you know, to, to, to run it more or, or pass it long or whatever. I, I don't know what Pembroke has to offer other than up the middle. We haven't seen anything really. And maybe this is part of the, uh, you know, you make it a, a one-half game and see what happens. Well, you know, again, they're coming in as the underdog, so uh, you know, the longer they can stick around um, in this game, the more oh. confidence they're going to get as the game goes on. Very nice punt by Nathan Beat, and it was down around the eight-yard line. I don't know, by number 30. I'll give it to number 30, uh, Luke Carroll. And uh, the Hill has got a long ways to go with 49 seconds. Now, you got to wonder if they're going to go into a little bit of a prevent um, with maybe some help over the top. Yeah, I, I, you got to be careful here. I mean, the, the Hillers have dodged a couple bullets. Pembroke has not taken advantage of uh, that last turnover or the good field position that they've had. They have uh, not taken advantage of it. The Hillers want to be careful here. I could see them taking one shot downfield, but you've got to give yourself a little space. And you don't want to be taking a safety in this situation no. either, uh, the way this game's going. No, two, every two point could do it. Right, every point counts. Yeah, so they are a little deep. They're off. Nobody's up bumping anybody. They're going to let them run their patterns. And that's Cooney, but that's not going to go far. They'll give them that, you know, that five, five seconds off the clock, 44. They'll let them do that all, all the way down. Yeah, they were playing to the, back. To the 50. Yeah, <laughs> they were playing back. They, they definitely could run that play. Um, maybe they'll try and set it up for some sort of hitch and go, um, try and get them to bite on it, but we'll see. One thing's for sure is the Hillers don't look like they're looking to run the clock out. No. So they got three receivers to the right. Keller here with Frank, his bodyguard. Quick throw to... He's still in bounds, though. I don't know who it is. Is it Ionelli? Quick throw to Ionelli. Got a close to a first down. And the first down, the, the clock's going to stop. Stop. And then it'll start it up when they plant the sticks. Yeah, the Hillers had some bodies out in front of them there. They did a nice job um, setting up a wall, and uh, Ionelli just kind of took it up there. It looked like he was trying to get out of bounds, but the – the clock um, stopped briefly with the first down, so it looks like the Hillers just going to kind of let it run here, maybe throw a bomb or two. <laughs> let it run with three receivers in the left. Yeah, I mean, let well, it go, I, right? Yeah, here this we go. I'd run number seven and number eight down. Oh, if, oh no. Did he fumble the ball? It's I don't, a fumble. It's I, a fumble. I don't know what happened there. It's I don't know if he was throwing it or a fumble or it, what. It wasn't. And they weren't calling it incomplete, so that was a – that's. And they have the ball. The ball was recovered by Stoughton at about the – No, Pembroke. Oh, Stoughton, Pember. That's all down south, isn't it? I'm not even sure how we came up with Stoughton. <laughs> we were talking about it earlier. Uh, oh, oh, you know what? They're the same color as Stoughton, I think. Yeah, we were talking about it after that Milton <laughs> touchdown. But anyway, this is uh, this is what you were talking about. So you got four seconds on the clock, and it was ruled a fumble. Couldn't tell if he was going to throw it or what, but they started going after it like a fumble. They, they certainly it, weren't implementing the tuck rule. Yeah, <laughs> and it's at the 10-yard line. So um, you think they have a kick? I mean, this would be an opportunity to do it. Rick, I don't Rick, think they're going to run 10 yards up the no, middle. No, Rick, I think it's going to be a dive right. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a dive right right here. 
I can't imagine them coming up with anything anything different from what I've seen by this Pembroke team. But what, what yard line are we on here? The, the 10. 10? The it's just inside so, the 10. Well, 27, 28 yarder. You know, uh, no, I, don't, I can't no, see any. No, they're coming out. They don't. Uh, no, they're going to run a play here. Yeah, they're going to they're going to have to run a play. Okay, so here we go. Four seconds at the ten. Last should be the last, pending any penalty, should be the last play of the half. All right, wait. They're in that formation, that that eye thing they call it. And he fakes, rolls right. He's going Holding. all the way back to the left, and he's going to go up, and it's intercept, intercepted by, or at least, yeah, it was intercepted. Can you see who's over there, Ionelli? Uh, it was either Ionelli or Deloya. No, it's Ionelli with the ball. And that'll end it for the half. So uh, there's really no recap for the half. There's a, a defensive struggle. And uh, we'll be back right away for the second half. Back to the second half of the Division IV South sectional quarterfinal game between the Hopkins Union Hillers and the Pembroke Titans. Well done, the first half. 
Uh, not a lot of scoring, some opportunities on both sides. Uh, Hall is, um, Hoppington showing more of a, an ability to move the ball through the air. Pembroke not able to move the ball really at all, trying to dive left, dive right, not very effective. As a result, turnovers were, could have been the, uh, a little bit of an issue in the first half for Hoppington. They turned out not to be, and as a result, 0-0. Zero, zero. Hopkinton, um, they dodged a couple bullets there, Rick. They had a couple turnovers inside their own territory towards the end of the second half, uh, second quarter. Um, Pembroke's offense, you know, you don't want to call it inept, but at this point, I, I don't have any other word to describe it. Um, they don't seem very uh, imaginative as far as what they're trying to do. They seem to be trying to just pound it. Uh, Pounded up the middle, and, and they're not, that's not being, it's not effective. So, um, Hopkinton also had their opportunities. Will uh, Abbott and Ryan Kelleher came v inches away from completing a bomb um, in the first quarter. And then Will had a, a catch down here at this end zone. Um, you know, he had it, and then he kind of lost it at the last second. So, each team, like you said, Rick, has had their opportunities. I, I feel that Hopkinton looks like the better offensive team. But both of these defenses are very good and playing very well. Yeah, we talked about that before we uh, kicked off, that the, the defense for the Hillers has really been playing well. And Pembroke certainly uh, can flow to the ball. Uh, maybe they don't match us up exactly speed for speed, but they get guys who can get to the ball. Yeah, I mean, they um, they look like they're pursuing again. They, you know, they did pick up a pass, but I, I, they could have had two or three other interceptions. So Will Haley for Pembroke will kick off deep to DeLoyer and Abbott. And here we go. And it's a squibbler right to, uh, probably the wrong guy to squib it to, Ebert. Cuts across the field, he's got some, but he's gonna get tracked. He's gonna run out of field. He just came all the way across with no gain. Went out around a 30, uh, close to the 40 yard line, 37, 38 yard line, maybe even the 39. Yeah, that looked like it was a quick shot down to third base and Connor uh, scooped it up and took it across the field. And, you know, again, this, this, I don't know if this Pembroke team is as fast as Hopkinton, but they have enough kids on there that they can match Hopkinton's lateral speed, at least yeah. here early Well, they can float the to the ball and they take good angles and that, that's gonna work most of the time. So. If, We'll start the first series at the 39-yard line of the Hillers. Kelleher in the shotgun with three receivers to the left. And he's got Abbott all by himself. A single, just a quick out. And number 30. 33. 33 on the tackle, Jeremy Moylan. Yeah, that was that roll, uh, roll out by Ryan. And then um, Will just runs a quick out. It was effective in the first half. And that's a good play to get the Hillers started here in the uh, second half, first possession. Yeah, they don't often isolate Will out one-on-one -on, -one on the uh, on the offside, but um, that could be a play where it's an out and up at some point if they're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I don't think that they um, that they have seen <laughs> that they know that that Will can run deep. Zach Frank runs tough. He threw a couple of guys off him, and then he runs straight up the middle, and it's going to be. A good gain. That was second and one on the play. Picked up at about 10. Down to the 43, 42 yard line. Yeah, uh, Zach took that um, over the left side. He made a couple guys miss. There was a couple guys trying to tackle his shoulder pads. He was running low and hard. And, and you know, I mean, Zach has been basically at least the last couple games just doing pass blocking. But looks like the Hillers are trying to keep them honest. And they're going to hand them the ball sometimes and not just let them pass block. Another hitter with uh, Zach Frank, and he's going to pick up about, yeah, we'll call it four on the play. He gets it down to the 39-yard line. So here we go, Rick. I mean, we kind of touched on the fact that the Hillers were not running in between the tackles. It looks like they may have made some sort of adjustment here and are going to try and establish a little bit of a, of a ground game. And um, they're giving – um, Zach Frank the opportunity to kind of pound it up here the first couple of plays of the half. Yeah, some of that could be the, you know, Ebert's been playing a lot of defense and they're going to need him on the defensive side. They give him a blow from time to time. 
Yeah, last week was the first game that Connor played some significant defensive time, and he played great. And there's the out and up, and they got the second guy down there. That was – so, So Don, that was the play we were just talking about. They tried to set it up, but it might have been a little early to set that up. I'd like to see the out, 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 just hammer away at that first. Yeah, it looked like they were waiting for it, almost baiting the Hillers into running it because they had two guys there covering. And, um, and really, Ryan did a nice job not throwing it into traffic and uh, getting it uh, either where nobody could catch it. And Ebert, and, and there's that, that pass. It's got to be on film now, right? Um, it debuted against Holliston. Blow the whistle. Yeah, it, it seemed like he got stuck up pretty good, but that was that little uh, shuffle pass that's a fake to Ebert going in the jet sweep inside on Abbott coming in, and that didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, you know, they ran it pretty effectively for a touchdown last week against Holliston. Um, you know, Pembroke had that red, but it was really – they had some nice penetration there. So whether they were expecting it or not, they – you know, that there was nothing going to happen there because they had some penetration over the right side of the line that was going to blow up just about any play. So Kelly's going to oh, throw it, and oh, it was tipped and no good. We went for the fake. Was that going to Ionelli? Yeah. I, oh, was, Frank, I don't know who that was going to. I'm going to say it was going to Ionelli, but it was a slow-developing fake, and it looked like he was taking a long time to get the ball and throw it. And I think if it wouldn't have been tipped, Rick, there was a good chance that would have been a pick for yeah, six. Yeah, I don't I mean, I, I, it, it wasn't going to make it to Ian Alley, I can tell you that much. So on the fake punt, that uh, turns the ball over at the 38-yard line. And I'm guessing the thinking is here is this offense is just a pound, pound, pound. It's not you're thinking that, okay, it was just, we're going to hold him. I don't think we're going to give him a 60-yard drive to be able to score. And, again, they come out in the same type of formation. And number 32, Nicholas Lane coming uh, straight ahead off the left side. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't look like there's been many adjustments offensively for Pembroke. They're going to be content with just kind of uh, student body right, student body left. Um, you know, you don't really think that this is an offense that is built to go 60, 70 yards for a touchdown. That's why the Hillers really have to take care of their the ball when they have it and not keep handing it to Pembroke with a short field. You know, now you can see why they've lost a few close games because the offense just doesn't doesn't look like he can generate enough points. Oh, I, oh, oh fumble. He, he, he fumble. Who's, I don't know who's – no, apparently uh, Pembroke has the – oh, no, they're saying – oh, that was Killer very football. late. So they, they really didn't know. That Deloya came up with the fumble, but uh, – you, you got to know. Good. You got to know that's a fumble right there. They didn't. I don't think they actually saw it. To be honest with you. Well, it was stripped pretty early. I, I couldn't tell if the lawyer stripped it or he recovered it, <clears throat> but he was certainly excited about the play. Um, it looked like the the running back grabbed the ball as number thirty two, and somebody stripped it pretty early in the play as it developed. So that's a that's a big turnover for Hopkinton right here, and, oh. it, and it's about time that we get uh, strings and plays together. And yeah. So they get the ball at the forty. Three yard line, first and ten. And see if this is a lift. And it's Frank up the middle, and he cuts it back out right. And he's tough yards up in the middle. He's going to pick up about five. He's going to bang around there. That was an interesting run. They had Linquist going one way. It looked like Frank was going to follow him, but he headed off left and then cut back right. So um, that was a gain of four yards. And, you know, what, Rick, I would take four yards on first down. Yeah, this game, this is going to happen. This is going to be a short second half. <laughs> already, we're already halfway through the third quarter. 7-13 uh, to go in the third quarter. Second and we'll call it six. And three, five wide. Killer here by himself. Straight back, and he throws to the sideline, and Deloya. Catches it and is tackled at about well, right where he caught it. He picked up about two. Yeah, it looked like <coughs> it looked like Luke made a quick move there, and yeah, uh, it looked like he was going to shed that defender, but the defender made a nice job keeping a strong base and then making the tackle for you know minimal gain. 
So that brings up about third and a long four. From hey, the, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, it, the, the Hillers are sticking with this quick pass, screen pass type of offense. We really have not seen them take any shots down the field other than that one uh, bomb that they just missed. Well, so could be coming now. Who knows? A five wide again. Got Cooney one-on-one -on -one out here. I might take a shot at that. Abbott's opening the far side, and he's going to get it. Pushed out of bounds by number three, Matt Smith. But that was just complimentary routing right there where Abbott was able to cut to the outside. Yeah, kind of Cooney kind of ran uh, ran his guy off, and Abbott slid in behind, and that was a nice – that was a, uh, Ryan uh, Kelleher showed some nice touch to lay that in there to uh, to Will. Yeah, they had they had been going man up, but they had three guys over here to uh, keep that from Will from getting deep. So cutting it off was the right play there. So first and ten at the 25 yard line, maybe the 26, and straight ahead with oh, you got hit by number number 10, Nathan Beath, uh, hit Zach Frank. Right at the line, or dropped him for a, a little, a yard loss. Yeah, that was that same run they ran a couple plays ago. Uh, Pembroke had that sniffed out uh, for what ended up being the loss of a couple of uh, a couple inches. Okay, so it's second and yeah, we'll call it eleven from the. Uh, what are we at there? The thirty, the twenty-seven yard line. Twenty-six, twenty-seven. Five wide. Cooney and Nabbit to the right. And it looks like he's going to throw down deep down over the middle, and it's going to be, it should have been picked by number three. That's Matt the Smith had both hands on it, looking for either Linquist or Ionelli. Both of them were there. Yeah, they were they were both there, but uh, but Pembroke had nice coverage on it, and you know Ryan did a nice job staying in the pocket. They did get some pressure, and they hit him as he released the ball. Um, that was a nice throw, but again, that was just a good defensive play by Pembroke. So that's going to bring up third and third and eleven from the twenty-seven. Actually, they spotted it. It was at the twenty-seven. Now it's at the twenty-six. <laughs> gain a one on. Yeah, it. gain a one on an incompletion. I'll take that. Ebert in the backfield. Nope. There we go. Is that Ebert? Yeah, it yeah, is that Ebert. Was Ebert. Yeah. So he picked up probably what seven on the play. Eight, yeah, that seven, was fourth. It's gonna be fourth and three. This is gonna be an interesting call here, Don. Well, what yard line are we on here? We're the on the nineteen-ish. Nineteen. It'll be about a 34 yarder. It looks like they're sending Kelleher back out, fourth and three. That that was a nice run by Connor. That was up in between the tackles. Um, it looked like the uh, center made a nice, uh, turned his guy in there, and uh, he went right over in between him and the guard. And uh, that was a nice gain of uh, six, seven yards. So tight rolls. He's rolling, he's rolling, he's rolling. He's got. Somebody caught it. Linquist. <laughs> Linquist caught it for the first down out around the 12 yard line. Yeah, you know, the, this is kind of a bread and butter play, at least within this game plan here tonight with the Hillers, is that little quick out with Kelleher rolling right. It has been Abbott that's been running it. They threw Linquist over there, and he ran a nice pattern with a huge first down right there for the Hillers. So that's a big first down on fourth down. 414 to go in the third quarter. And it's Ebert to the right of Kelleher, three receive, uh, two receivers to the left. And it's straight up the middle, and it's going to – he's driving hard down to about the three-yard line. I'm, might be just short of the first down. Okay, so this is a nice adjustment that the Hiller coaching staff has made. Everything has been outside bubble screens, bouncing it outside with the runs. You had the jet sweep. They come into the second half. They kind of – Pound it up the middle with Frank a little bit, soften it up, and now they give it to Hebert, who has had uh, two straight nice carries. And I don't know, Rick, if it's me, I'm handing it to him again here on second and short. Well, it wouldn't hurt. So he got uh, split, and he's to the right of Kelleher, and it's going to be a straight-ahead handoff, and Chuck he's in. Kelleher. Yeah. Somebody really pounded him from behind. He yeah. shot through once he got in. It was this quarterback. Well, he came up, but somebody else hit it from the right side to shoot him through. Yeah, so that'll, that'll put the Hillers up at 327, six to nothing on a nice drive with, like you said, a lot of inside running to do it. 
Yeah, that was some. Uh, the, the line did a very nice job there, and you know that cracks me up. There, Kelleher's in there pushing his running back uh, into the end zone. And that, Rick, right there is a big score because you know any score is going to be big against a, a Pembroke team that does not look like they have really anything going on on offense. So we'll have to see if they're going to put a little bit more uh, urgency into their play calling. And in fact, Liuka with the point after he boomed it pretty good. Oh yeah, he's got a leg. I mean. You know, I've, he's been pretty solid the last two years. So as we come back upfield, the Hillers take a seven to nothing lead on an Ebert three yard run. And back the extra point. So seven to nothing, the Hillers lead. And as Don said, that could, that could, should be, could be enough. Cause I'm not exactly sure unless it's turnover wise, what's going to happen with uh, with Pembroke on the offensive side. But well, the, the big turnover, though, uh, really sets us up, Don. Yeah, um, that, that was a huge turnover in midfield. And that's almost been the the best field position that Hopkinton has had tonight. They, yeah. You know, they've been, yeah. they've been back in their own end um, basically all game. They had a turnover there at midfield, and they, uh, they took advantage of it. So it looks like number 10, Nathan Beath and... Can't see who's jumping up here, waiting for Kelly's kick. That was, uh, it's the up man, number three. Gets to the corner, he's tackled at about the 35 yard line. Number three, Matt Smith. Looks like he was tackled by, by Matt Smith. number 20. Taken down by Chris Canal. Yeah, which is like Chris Canal. Canal. Yep, and um, yeah, that wasn't a very deep kick, so they got some good field position. That was good coverage by Canal and the rest of the defense, or the rest of the kick coverage team. Um, so we'll see what Pembroke has here. I mean, there's a ton of time left on the uh, Oh, yeah. You know, yeah it's in 3 19 in the there's third quarter. That's, that's not really time to panic. Nope. You don't have to come out trying to be something you're not. Oh, that didn't work at all. I think the the receiver was supposed to come down and block. Was that Hebert? That was Hebert that made the tackle. I was kind of ISOing on the line. It yeah. looked like they had a block. No, so number know. 80, Brian Burns was supposed to come back and seal that, and he he didn't get there. Okay, yeah, because they had they uh, the the offensive line there was doing a good job. Um, but yeah, if, if they're not gonna block Hebert, then he's gonna certainly make the tackle. That's for sure. So there's a loss of three on the play. We'll call it second and 13. Yeah, those two big kids on the right side of Pembroke, um, you know, I don't know. They're big, but I'm not seeing much of a uh, firing right off. To the left of the outside. Nathan Lane running hard. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, I think that this might be Pembroke's only chance that they have to generate any offense is to get that kid – you know, into the open field and maybe just break one because he does have some speed. Um, but I, I have a tough time seeing it coming through the air. Well, it's just haven't demonstrated they can. I mean, it, it, the way they set up, there's, there's three guys covering two. How are you going to throw the ball? Right. Right? I don't, you know, they, they use a, a tight end, but he's not, he's just a blocking tight end. And you got three guys over here. To cover. Uh, and he gets on a he's on a penalty at number 11. Joe Benting just yeah. twitched a little bit out here on the outside. Yeah, he had a procedure call over here, and now that's going to put them in third and 15. So this is the kind of spot here where you might want to pin your ears back and go after the quarterback and maybe push them into another turnover. This is where you got to be careful of the screen. I don't know what they have for speed outside of this Nathan Lane, but possible screen it's possible I mean uh, you know the Hopkinton is rushing their outside linebackers so you know they're going to effectively basically have you know five people rushing at all times and look at this he's gonna get sacked <laughs> Cousins number 51 yeah Cousins made a nice move on his guy number 55 with comes up with a huge sack to pin, and, and you know, Rick, not only does that put them in fourth down, but it really kind of changes the field position here. I mean, they had it at the 
35 yard line. Now they're going to be punting back on their own uh, 20. Yeah, they just uh, they're going to combat that kicking away from from Abbott by putting a, another return man back there. It looks like Ionelli. Don't let it bounce. Somebody's got to get it. Oh, this is going to be one of those bounces, and he's going to ooh. Would have been dangerous, but that's a nice kick. Gets it all the way down to the 31-yard line, so he got a, a lot of that back. Yeah, that was a nice kick by that kid, and it was a big spot for him to do that because the Hillers were going to be set up right there to take over the ball at midfield, and, you know, with a good bouncing, rolling punt, um, you know, the, the, pinned the Hillers back a little bit. But in, in my opinion, we should be catching those punts. I would have grabbed know, it. We're, 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 we're either too deep or something's going on, but we got to catch those punts. Yeah, I, I saw it happened last game, um, the situation very similar to that. And, and right there, yeah, we'll, we'll probably should have grabbed that and ran with it. So here we go. We got Ebert in the backfield, and we're using a lot of this Linquist in an H-back kind of formation thing. He's, he's got nice angles coming into – create blocking and Ebert gets about nine on the play yeah they kind of well they, yeah they got Linquist in there he's a big kid and he's a physical kid so they have him in there blocking um, again it looks like they're only running a couple different plays here uh, the offensive line it looks to be uh, sticking with their blocks and uh, really getting a good push here and the Hillers can kind of take the life out of Pembroke if he can get some running first downs here yes so that'll end the third quarter, and the Hillers will pick up the pick it up in the fourth quarter with a second and one, leading the game seven to nothing on an Ebert three-yard run. Yeah, you've got to figure that this is the time that you know you want to win this ball game. It is uh, seven nothing. You've got the ball basically at midfield. Uh, well, is it in midfield, Rick? Where no, 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 no. We're at about the, the forty. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, you got a quarter here. This would really kind of take the life out of Pembroke if you could put together a drive here. And even if you don't get in, change the field position and kind of pin them back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. What I, this will be a good opportunity to, uh, to get it down the field again. Try to get it down the field and uh, try that Abbott pass again. You know, or, or somebody, try it deep. Second and one, you might as well, the way you're running the ball. Well, you know, one of these kids, whether it's going to be Abbott or Cooney or Lindquist or Ionelli or, or even Deloya, you know, one of these kids is going to be in single coverage, and, um, you know, it's going to be up to Ryan to recognize who that is, find them, and, uh, and, and connect. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're set for the fourth quarter. A 7 nothing ball game. Hill is second and one from their own 40-yard line. And it's straight ahead run. And I can't, I'm guessing it was Ebert that took it straight up the middle. Yeah, the, the uh, Pembroke defense stacked that up pretty well. But yeah, enough for the first down, so move the chains. Move the chains to another hill on first down. So the 43-yard line, first and 10. Coach Sullivan talking with Ryan Kelleher what the play is. You know, we're in a situation here where you don't where you don't want to um I got my fans over here, they're distracting me. <laughs> fan club, Don has got a fan club. Where um well, you know, the, you know, they they have the lead, but they don't want to uh, they don't need to rush either. And Kelleher's rolling, rolling, rolling. You got Ionelli, and Ionelli picks up about three or four on the play as he's tackled by number seven, Bryce Garvey. Yeah, again, that was a, that was a quick out, um, which they run effectively. Ryan really throws that pass well. I mean, he's got that one down. He hits it, <laughs> um, and it, it's funny how they keep switching up the receivers. That was Ionelli on that one. He probably doesn't want to catch any more short passes today. I know he's had a physical game so far <laughs> on both sides of the ball. Yes. Yeah, this is that run play with Lindquist just comes and seals. He didn't get number 10 on that play, but he's coming in to, you know, throw the <laughs> – you were watching Kelleher? I'm watching Kelleher. Yeah. He's cracking me up in this game. <laughs> well, you know, if you, if you remember from last year, Rick, Ryan got on the field – 
uh, as a safety before. He was on the defense yeah. last year. They played him on defense a little bit. He's yep. a physical kid. Sure. And then, uh, you know, when Jimmy Adams was hurt, then he kind of, you know, got some action at quarterback. But uh, it certainly doesn't look like he's afraid to mix it up in there. That's for sure. Okay, so they're going to go with a tight, tight, almost stack to the right. Third and about three. They're rolling again. Roll, roll, roll. He's going to try to run it, and he's going to get it. And he gets out just over the first down marker. Yeah, uh, you had 59, uh, uh, Butello, and number 52, Alex McDonald, out here leading Ryan, throwing some nice blocks. Ryan got to the outside, and that was a, that was a big first down. The only thing I would have liked to see him do differently would be stay in bounds and let the clock keep moving. So... 8.57 to go in the third quarter. Uh, fourth quarter, I'm sorry. First and 10 from the Titans' 45-yard line. And straight ahead to Frank, and he bounces off, but a punishing oh. hit, and we're going to have a flag. I'm not sure. Yeah, big number 77. I don't know what was going on there. They... Whether fit, who's 55? Do we have a 55? Yeah, Stuckel was on. It looks like he was on a trap block, and he nailed 77. But then it looked like 77 was giving him a little bit of business there at the end of the play. And it's again, that's another 15-yard yeah, costly penalty. Just, yeah, and he's getting a 77 taken off the field as his uh, coach is going to give him a little lesson in something. Well, that's 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 a huge um, that's a huge swing right there because there was really a gain of nothing, mm -hmm. um, and now you got a first down, and the Hillers are um, in business here inside the 30-yard line. So it brings up first and ten from the 28-yard line, and uh, Ebert to the right of Kelleher. and it's just going to be a straight-ahead run. He gets through a, a sizable hole. Taken down by number 30, Luke Corral. Yeah, that was a nice, uh, there was some nice blocking there, and Connor squeezed through in between the end and, uh, and defensive tackle and uh, put up a nice 11, 12-yard gain. Yep, so that's a first down. And I don't know if um, what the timeout is here. I didn't see who called the timeout. I don't, you know, you can't, you, you can't, uh, you can't control Mike DeRozan with the microphone. You can only hope to contain him. That's what I'm, that's what I'm kind of finding here. The little football analogy: they somebody gave him a microphone and an open window. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I love it. I think Jack Golden's gonna have a tough time getting his job back if Terosian keeps this rowdy yeah, business up well, here. Yeah, we'll have to see what's going on. <laughs> all his fans are coming by to see him in the in the booth too. He's keeping it all happening. He's doing okay. Hopkinton famous, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a long time out. Not the 22nd variety. First no. down at the, we'll call it the 16. Somewhere around there. Yeah, I'm going to put it about the 16-yard line. And, th you know, this is a, a big sequence here, Rick. Um, you know, you got that penalty. You want to put this game away right here. Pembroke has played tough. They've stayed in it, but this is a good way to kind of bury them right here with a touchdown. And it's just going to keep running that, that slash, and he gets outside, and it looks like it might be coming back. I saw a flag on the play. Yeah, I think that was a hold. Well, he bounced it. It was supposed to come into the middle, and he bounced it back outside, and oftentimes when you change direction, it creates the holding opportunity. Yeah, there hasn't been a lot of penalties. Pembroke's had a couple of those personal fouls. Hopkinton's played a fairly clean game. Um, looks like that's going to move him back there. And, and again, that's not going to help. And oh, this I, is uh, so, oh, was that 10? Did he step off 10? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It looked like he was going for a little longer walk. He's trying to get his steps in, right? Yeah, I guess so. So that brings up uh, first and 20. from the 26-yard line. And that's uh, picked up about two by Ebert. Yeah, they're using Linquist almost exclusively in that H-back formation, and he's coming just across the kick out. 
almost a pulling action to clear out a hole. Yeah, and it seems to be working. It's been a nice, nice adjustment that the Hillers have have made here in the second half. And you know, it's, it would be now it would be interesting because this could be a situation where you may see a field goal here, Rick. Yeah, I mean, two score he's, game. Gotta, he's probably got to get down to about the 15-yard line to feel comfortable with that. Well, it's second and 17, so we're still uh, we still got some yards to the, make he's up here. He's at the 23, here. and he's going to throw. And he's got he's going deep over the middle, and it's it, oh, it was almost picked. He was looking for a Cooney, but number 32. Nicholas Lane stepped in front of that. that. He had two hands on that ball, Don. Again, they, you know, it looks like the, you know, we've got an open receiver, but this Pembroke team closes on the ball quickly. And that was another situation where that could have easily been picked off. So it stops the clock at 7-12. Third and about 17 to go. Kelleher has the play. You know, this is, uh, you're in a situation here, Rick, where you almost, you know, you're third and 17. You want to get at least eight yards here, get some positive yards to have an attempt of a field goal. And he's going to roll. He's rolling, he's rolling, and he's, oh, he just heaves up a ball that's picked off. Picked off. He threw it up into the corner. Abbott just got sandwiched by two defenders, and he just couldn't get to it, and it was picked off in a, it's going to be a touchback out at the 20 for Pembroke. So that didn't go exactly the way you thought or hoped it would go. No, you, you know, you don't you want to be able to take advantage anytime you get, uh, you know, inside the 30-yard line. And the Hillers kind of moved backwards starting with that holding penalty. Um, you know, Ryan Kelleher has done a really nice job all year protecting the ball. Um, that's his second interception. Uh, he, he really – third interception. He really uh, – he shouldn't have thrown that ball. That was a – that was a, that was a prayer and uh, a duck, and uh, it was it was unfortunately for the Hillers it was picked off. So the turnover, yeah, what a surprise! <laughs> Nicholas Lane straight uh, to the right side, and he picks up a, a hard, we'll call it four, maybe five. Rick, I can honestly say um, that I coached <laughs> Pop Warner teams back in the day with a more sophisticated offense than Pembroke is running right now. <laughs> I can guarantee it. Well, the kid's proven he's tough. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, I mean, yeah, he's tough. You know, he <laughs> yeah, run into a brick wall. You know, I know. Won. I mean, it's uh, so that he picked up four. We'll call it second and six. And it's a different running back in there now. Same result. Yeah, I think he lost yards. It might have been number 11, Joe Benting. You know, this is it's, – it's just – it's interesting to see in this day and age in football. You know, you don't see this type of offense normally run. And and normally, you know, when it's ineffective, you've got to have some other – Well, it's kind of funny. You have um, – Tricks in the book. What's uh, Einstein's definition of insanity? You try the same thing over and over again and expect a different result? Right. right, right. <laughs> well, he was right because it's not working. So – here we go. You got third and six here, man. Either you want to get in this game or you don't, Pembroke. What are you going to do? They're going to run it. Oh, he's going to pass. He's he's looking. He's got he's got somebody oh, deep. Oh, running. don't that's throw it. that no, flag. Don't throw oh, that flag. Oh, he was flag. going. He was going to. He said it was and it really shouldn't have been in catching. It was. In, I think it was in a, incidental. He, they've got their yeah. feet caught up. It, it had looked. nothing to do with with it. So he yeah. was reaching for that flag, though. He he was. He he scared me there. Um, but it was, yeah, they just got kind of got tangled up. Um, but that receiver stopped running. He stopped running. That's right. Yeah. He wasn't going. He wasn't going hard enough the whole way. Mm -mm. So they're going to punt. They're going to leave it up on their defense. Um, you know, the good thing for the Hillers is, is we have established an inside running game, and this is when you need it, Rick. So these guys are too deep. He's gonna. I think they're going to try. I, they're probably deep because they don't want it. They, they've been running these, you know, ground punts, and it's bound, been bouncing. But that's got to be caught right there. there you you can't wait for it to do that. You're going to catch it in the air. Ionelli still loose, and he gets hit hard, but he brings it down to the 40-yard line on a nice, nice return. But again, Don, we're getting lucky with those little bounces. You don't know where it's going to bounce, and uh, that ball should be caught in the air. Yeah, I think that they were almost just moving them back even deeper just so they could field it and not let um, not let it bounce back or by them. Ionelli did a nice job scooping that up, running the ball hard. and uh, There's a flag on the play, Don. What do you got? Oh, that's too bad. Holding, Holding. against Hawkinson. 
against the green team. So we're going to move it back from the 40 back to the other 40. Yeah, that's t that's tough right there because that was a nice return. And now, um, you know, I mean, Hopkinton, you got 523 left here, Rick. You, you, you know, you, you, you still need to make some plays if you want to win this game. Um, and it's going to start with trying to get a first down here. Okay, so we'll set it up. It's first and 10 from the Hopkinton side of the field on the 40 with 523 to go. And uh, Ebert to the left of Kelleher. And there's a quick pitch out to the left. And he oh, escapes a tackle and cuts all the way back in the field. And he gets the first down, picks up 11. Well, oh, he started to come across the field, but he tackled it about the 49-yard line of Pembroke. Yeah, Connor kind of took that left, and he that was a really nice cutback he made right there. Um, Pembroke was in pursuit. They did a nice job pursuing, but they didn't get to him until, you know, he was 10, 11 yards down the field, and that was a big first down for the Hillers. Yeah, the, the first guy he made miss in the backfield was the, the key to that run. Now you'd like to think that the Hillers are going to try and keep this on the ground and keep running the clock. And the pitch, and he comes mm. up, and he's nice spin out, but his buddies are coming, and he's – pinned for about a four yard loss back at the back at the Hiller 47 yard line and looks like we got an injury or a cramp yeah they uh, Pembroke had that uh, covered right off the bat uh, Connor really had no shot I thought they were going to get Abbott with a block in the back um, they did not call that thankfully but that was uh, that, that, that play was not going to work from the get go and Dr. Brian Bisconi out here. Yeah, I was right in front of Bisconi, so he's on top of it. I, it looks initially like it's a cramp. Um, well, I saw some of the um, some of the players stretching as if they had cramps. I mean, I have a bad back, Rick. So maybe I should maybe <laughs> I should start <laughs> start stretching. Yeah, that might help a little bit. Yeah, so, they yeah, so number eighty, he's up. Good to see him up, Brian Burns. And, oh, he's got to, he thinks he's going back in, but he's got to come off for a play. Yeah. All right. So it was a loss of almost five on the play. We'll call it you know, loss of four. We'll call it second and 14 from the 47-yard line. And the clock will start on the official. 4.31 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, I, 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 you got to think Pembroke has all of their timeouts, so uh, if we don't get some positive yardage, I would expect to see them call one. So I'm going to tell you, the second half, if I was going to key on this offense, Linquist is the key to this offense. Where he goes, the ball goes. Yeah. Yeah, he's the, he's the key kick-out block. And, um, but even when they run to the other side, yeah, he, he's, he's pulling out that way as well. So – He's um, they're gonna have to run some misdirection with that in future games. Uh, if they're gonna run, run the ball, continue to run the ball. I'm surprised that um, Pembroke did not stop the clock there. Well, they got a it's third and third and nine pickup of about five in the play, and he's gonna throw, and he's looking deep, and he's got Abbott open, uh, and it's touchdown. <laughs> You knew that had to happen. That was a a fifth, was that the ball in the that was a 49-yard touchdown pass from Kelleher to Abbott to make it 13 to nothing. But he done. He got behind the defense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that uh, that what Pembroke, you know, we kind of lulled them to sleep. You know, this isn't the NFL. This isn't college football where you've got a bunch of tape out there. Pembroke probably did not know a lot about Hopkinton other than their record. They probably got the film last week from Holliston. Didn't see a lot of bombs. They weren't, probably weren't even sure we had the capability of running that kind of oh. kind of play. And, uh, you know, that's a big spot right there. And you know what? Another thing is, Rick, that's a gutsy call. And a tough got snap. It. And no, no he did no, not. Didn't. It was a it, the snap caught Kelleher by surprise up by his face. It might have come harder than he thought. But the failed point at 328 of the fourth quarter puts the Hillers up 13 to nothing. Well, 
you know what what that call is there. You got third down. You got three. You know about three thirty five left in the game. If that's an incomplete pass, that you know you're you're giving them the ball back. You're stopping the clock. It's really a risky play there. Coach Sullivan, Coach Gerard had confidence in his play in their playmakers to let them go out, make a play, and and, and really put it away and secure the win. And I think that that's what they did. If there was, you know, if I would have seen a little bit more offense out of Pembroke, I'd say, hey, yeah, you know, don't, don't, that, you know, don't, don't, don't count your chickens just yet. But I, I don't know, Rick. I just I, don't see I, him I, doing I, anything. I, here. I, I think that's why they, you, you, it's a risk reward kind of thing. This offense isn't doing anything. No. So even if you're punting and putting them at the 20 yard line, I, I feel pretty confident with that defense being out there saying, go ahead, drive it 80 yards, pounding it up the right. middle. Yeah. So a squibber to number 30. And he breaks out to about the 43-yard line. Number 30 is Luke Carroll. Carroll, Carroll, or. And he's up at the 43-yard line. And good, good field position, but like you said, uh, it's going to take them 320 to get to the 20-yard line. So, And I'm not, you know, Rick, I'm not sure if it's just a. Uh, you know, personnel issue. Uh, yeah, kind of personnel. Thing? Do they not have receivers? Do they, does the quarterback does he not throw the ball that well? I mean, I I, I can't say he throws it great, but he has thrown it. It doesn't look like he throws a I bad mean, ball. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. You know, it's a it's just I've not, I have have not seen a high school football team that just really doesn't show an interest in throwing the ball in, in a while. In the last thirty years. Well, no, certainly in the last ten years. It's uh, the game has evolved a yeah. lot. That you you spread out the field and you. You throw the ball. I, I mean, and and now it explains to me why they're they've lost a lot of games by just a few points. This defense is stellar. They mm -hmm. can they can they can hang. Uh, they got enough speed, but they just can't put enough offense on the board. And is that I, I'm guessing that's uh, Nicholas Lane. On the carry, picks up about three. I, again, I, I just this is this is crazy town to me. I mean, you're in a playoff game. It's down 13 nothing. There's three minutes left in the game, and you're running a dive up the middle. I mean, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> if anybody's watched Bates football over the last five years, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is it right here. Worth the worth of worth a four hour drive. <laughs> yeah. And he throws and it oh that get there early. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a that's fans. a that's a flag on I don't know who got there early, but it's hard to say. Could have been um he's, he's either at, I probably have it. You coming in from that spot? Yeah, or Lindquist. Uh Lindquist would have been I think on in on, front of him. In front of him. Yeah, he kinda came over the back. You got Coach Swanton over here, uh Giving some instruction out on the field, <laughs> or or he's dancing. One of the two, I don't know. I, it looks, it, uh, it's looks a, better than uh, me uh, dancing. Uh, he doesn't have such a bad back, though, does he? <laughs> oh, I like to do the Fonzie dance. <laughs> remember how Fonzie used to dance? That's how I dance. That's how you dance. Yeah. All right. Could you start a jukebox that way too? I don't know. <laughs> sure. Huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm guessing you had hair back then. I can get it. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> okay. On the interference call, we got it. First and 10 at the 47-yard line of the Hillers. And now he's got – there, they got four wide receivers it's out there movement. now. And he's going to get it hit by the lawyer. Number – oh, that was Nicholas Lane, the intended receiver. But it got there – it was slow development. The lawyer able to come up and create the incompletion. Yeah, uh, Luke broke on that ball very well. It was kind of uh, 32 came out of the backfield, and Luke put a nice hard stick on him, playing with a lot of emotion tonight. And uh, that was a, that was a big stop. 234 left. Second and ten, and they're going with uh, four receivers at the back. Likely in for protection. He's going to have to slide to wherever that pressure's coming from. And he's coming from the right side, and he steps up, and he's picked off by Ionelli. He's been in is – he, yeah, he is calling an interception, so he picked it off at the 35-yard line. That should do it, Don, in, in terms of uh, scoring time on the clock to be able to have the Hillers run it out. Yeah, I mean, Hopkinton's going to have to to at least get one first down. Uh, Pembroke's got – I would say at least a couple timeouts left. So the Hillers do have a little bit more work to do 
um, offensively, but you know, Mike Lionelli is having himself a game here. Yeah, tonight. he's uh, he's certainly showing up on the score sheet, and he showed up early and often uh, on both sides of the ball. Showed his toughness today by getting tattooed a couple of times offensively, and certainly making his tackles from the safety side. You got Linquist in your wing here. And yep. they're gonna run right through there. Yeah, I mean that's they're trapping that number ten in the end. Which is fine, but they're going to have to, at some point, they're going to have to show something other than where, where, what he's doing is the key to what's happening. Yep. So, okay, as we run this out here, Rick, um, you know, the Hopkinton is the number one seed in the, so what are we called here? The we South? are the Division Four South. Um, so, number one seed. So, really, as the playoffs go, the, we're going to be right back here at, at, uh, at, uh, at Chick Welsh Field. I, I'm, I'm guessing, know. right, I, I'm guessing the highest seed hosts. Yeah. I mean, so you could host three games, right? Correct, yes. We will We will host uh, as long as we're winning playoff games. We'll, they'll have a game here at home, which, you know, that's awesome. I mean, these kids here, these seniors are getting, you know, six, seven, seven, eight games at home. That's And that's uh, Ebert. Cuts it up to the left side. He's he down gone. the middle. Oh, oh, he fell. Oh, he fumbled oh. him. <laughs> he fumbled, but I think he was down. They call it. He was down. He was down at the 44-yard line when he slipped his knee. When he slipped his knee, much to touch the ground, didn't look like it from here. But uh, yeah, he kind of went down. It's hard to tell if his knee touched or not. They did call him down. Um, then he kind of lost control of the ball, but he had the wherewithal to grab it back. So um, you know, I would say that's probably. No, they did not. I'm sorry, they did not call timeout. So maybe they're maybe they're out of timeout. So we could be in a situation here where it's victory formation. If um, if okay, so they do have some timeouts left, Rick, and it just seems like they're just going to let the clock run. One thirty-seven to go. We got uh, has to be a movement on on the Hillers. False start on the Hillers. Yep. Dead ball, false start. It'll be second and second and five. Uh, first and five from the Pembroke 48-yard line. 133 to go, and it's just letting it run down. I, I, first I, and 15. Yeah, I think I'd be. Uh, well, get it. I mean, they they've got three timeouts left, but they didn't call it, so maybe they're just saying, you know what? Uh, let's just get back on the bus. Pembroke is a is a long drive from here. Yeah, but you got in my mind, you got to you got to fight and claw and I'm do whatever you, you there, can. Man. Rick, I am with you there. I I not understanding uh some of the coaching decisions on Pembroke's side of the ball here and uh if in fact they are throwing up the flag and not calling timeout only down by two scores, then I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to explain. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. If you're going to just let the clock run out, you're not going to get a chance to First and 15. Kelleher hands to Ebert. And did he lose the ball? Somebody dove in there like it was a fumble, but no. So he picks up about three on the play. There's no timeouts to left. To the 45-yard line. Look at that. They're not calling it. Wow. So we're okay. going to get to the minute, one minute left of the fourth quarter. And with time, I don't have, yeah, okay, well. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe the uh, Pembroke coach well, somebody has, just called. Has, has the under. I don't know. So I don't know. No, they're letting no. it run. No. I thought he was calling timeout. No. No, they're just seeing how. Oh, they're going to let it run down and then call a timeout and run a play. Well, I don't know why he wouldn't just run the play and keep yeah, it going. Yeah, I, I don't know either. Just run the play and, you know, just let the clock run until. Well, I guess it's just going to be a, a victory formation yeah, at this point. I guess so. Yeah, the, the flag must have been thrown, I guess. So we're, it looks like we're going to move on. My phone is dead, so no, I can't but get we on had, Twitter uh, or anything. So, so we don't know if, if, if who won between Nauset and Dartmouth, but uh, we play the winner of that game yep. here at uh, Chick Welsh Field, Dave Hughes Stadium, next Friday night. Should be the time of the 7 o'clock. Start time. So this has been uh, this is the first playoff win for the Hillers in since, two years since 2000 and 
Uh, no, I'm sorry, since 2013. 13. Yep, since 2013. And they beat, they beat Milton here, but then they had to, this is where we were talking about Stoughton, where right. I brought up Stoughton, then we had to travel down to a tough team uh, in Stoughton on a very chilly October night. I remember it very well. Um, and, you know, that's, that. It, it's kind of, you know, I don't know, you know, you're looking at the teams that we're playing here, I don't really know any of them. So it's hard to say how well we're going to do. If this is any indication, I can tell you everyone's going to be tough because this Pembroke team, for all their uh, inability to move the ball, they came up here and played pretty tough as a team. Yeah, two and five, uh, you know, taking on the seven and zero oh Hillers, they 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 just wore down, I guess. You know, I mean, we made some adjustments in the second half, but as the as the clock runs down, and we'll just uh, we'll go through the scoring. Uh, won't take us very long to do it in the second quarter. At the 327 mark, Hebert, a three yard run. Bagliuca, extra point, made it seven to nothing. Then in the fourth quarter, with 328 to go in the fourth quarter, a 49 yard pass, Kelleher to Abbott. The kick no good, gives us the final score of 13 to nothing. And for our producer, Mike Tarosian, our camera guys, or camera people, John Ritz and Denise Antaki, our director, Tom Dings. He's Don Lehman, I'm Rick DeSena, and we'll see you next Friday night. You Thank you. It.